this is Joanna and you're watching my figure skating YouTube channel. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for subscribing. Also bear in mind every like, every comment, it helps this channel grow a little bit. And it's just, it means a lot to me because uh, this is me sharing a very like personal story, but I'm very happy to do it because it's, it's like, it's such a unique story in some ways. And therefore, um, yes, you are watching the last episode of my figure skating story, but this will be in two parts. And also I have so many other videos coming up, so please subscribe and be notified or follow me on social media so you know when a new video is up. It's gonna be every Monday, but maybe sometimes I'll tweak and, and post two videos in a week. Anyway, let's, uh, let's start. Um, my ice dance, if you watched my previous episodes, you would know that my ice dance career ended after I came back from Canada. So what happened after that was that I had no clue what I was gonna do with my life. I was in the exact age where it, where it was like kind of perfect to quit skating and just start a normal life, go to university, get a degree, get a job, like become a normal person, like maybe teach skating and do all that because I was 18, 19 at the time, I was 19. But to me, I had like, I still felt a little hungry. I felt like I hadn't taken everything I could from this sport. And it's like, you put all this time and effort into this and then it, you just finish. You know, it was, it was not like a very positive emotion that I had, but like quitting ice dance was definitely the right thing to do because I really wanted to be closer to my home and like kind of balance my life a little more. And, um, Back in Estonia, my mother, she got me uh, new skates because my ice dance skates were just like destroyed and like really old and not good. Plus, uh, freestyle skates are a little different. The blade is longer and the toe picks are bigger. So you get to jump better and higher and uh, because ice dancers don't jump. And it's just there's like quite a lot of um, differences in the boots that you feel on the ice. So she got me new skates and she was like, like, why don't you just skate? Like, that's like something you like to do and it'll help you be in shape and like healthy. So here are your new skates. And I started skating like a few times every two weeks. I don't know, like it was so like irregular. I just went in when I wanted to, but I kind of enjoyed it. I like, I tried a little bit some things, but I was still, I was still afraid like to jump because I hadn't jumped for five years. And, uh, but there was this one time that I, I was skating in Dongiraba and this girl, Elena Glebova, who actually became a coach after this, she was looking through this small window in hall two at the rink. And she saw me skate and somehow we got to talking on Facebook. I don't remember exactly how, who started the conversation, but it ended up being that, hey, like, why don't we skate together? Like, uh, she had only quit her career, I think two years before that, or a year even, I don't know maybe the same year i don't know anyway she was like why don't you uh come skate with me and like it'll be more fun for you and we can like see what it'll, where it'll take us and i was like yeah sure like I, I would love to skate with you and we were good friends anyway we started skating together a little bit i started like to try jumping a little bit and it felt good like i was like this is nice like it feels good challenging you know and then at the end of that year, that was 2014, I went um, on holiday and we made a deal that once I come back, we're gonna decide what I'm gonna do. If we're gonna actually form like a team that she's gonna be my coach, mentor, and I'm gonna be uh, back to single skating, you know? Uh, so I went on my holiday at the end of the year and during that holiday, I was like, yeah, Let's do this. I'm still young enough. I, I feel like there's still like a small little fire burning inside me. So I want to give it a try. Okay, what happened next was that we we came up with this plan and she was like, listen, you have to go to the States because the best coach is in the States. I like, I want you to go there and learn the triples. It'll make it so much worthwhile for you to go there, but there's no point going if you're not going to be physically ready for that because that's like heavy training okay got it i needed to lose some weight which is fine i started training really hard so i did lose some weight 
but I was determined. I was like, I want to go to the States because that was New York. I was like, I'm not missing out on this opportunity. I mean, it's going to be expensive. So it's like no point going if you're not determined. By the time spring came, I had all my double jumps. My triples were super downgraded and super, sh excuse me, bad. Uh, I did have my double axle. It actually took me one day to get it back. The first day I started, I tried jumping. I tried jumping my double axle and I landed it. So I was not that bad because it had been five years since I last jumped. So it was just so exciting. And I was like on a goal, like, let's just try more. And so in the spring, we decided we're gonna go to the States for the whole summer to train there. And we flew over in June and I was just like so excited and and so into it. I was determined. Everything was so hard. I felt like I was the worst skater on the ice because I was skating with these superstars on the ice, but it really helped me be motivated. I was like training four hours a day on the ice, two hours off ice. Then when I would have the energy and time, I would like wrap plastic from all the way from here to my toes uh, and then tights and then sweatpants that don't let air through like those, um, um, not like this type of material, but like, anyway, they wouldn't let anything come through. So they would really make me sweat and like a sports bra. And I would go for like 40 minute run on the stadium. It's 32 degrees outside and I was like, like super happy running on the stadium because I was like, I need to, like, I want to do this. I'm so excited. I never felt better about training. There were days when I absolutely hated it. My coach there was Igor Korkovic. It was my first like real male coach. And we got along well, but we had this interesting like communication that sometimes we were just like, <laughs> like he would kick me off the ice and that was like the only coach that has ever done it he like kicked me off the ice and then he would come back like, and apologize it was like we had this funny communication but he was great like he we were like i think we were having like we were at this like bar having snacks with me elena and him and he was like just casually talking and then he goes listen if you don't have three triples by the end of this summer I guarantee I'll pay your money back. And I was like, I don't even know what would be better, getting the money back for the trainings and have two triples or having three triples. Huh. Anyway, well, he ended up not having any of the money. Like he, he got all the money that he uh, asked for, which is fine. I had all my triples by the end of the summer. They weren't stable, but within three months I managed to learn all the triples that I didn't even know how to jump before, but now I had landed each one of them clean at least once. And that was like awesome. I think, no, four triples. I didn't do a toe loop at the time, which I did do later, but at that, I think I didn't learn it at the summer, but it was just like awesome. I was so excited and just like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Like I was really happy. I went to Miami that summer for a few days and it was just, I made like a bunch of friends in New York and I was so happy. Like I have such good memories from that summer, even though it was really tough training and I would call home and be like, mom, I am not doing this any longer. I want to go home. This is rubbish. And she was just like, Joe, you just gotta be patient. Like you've already gone, like gone through so much. And I was like, mom, I had to do one hour of single jumps today, which if you're a skater, you'll understand that. You just want to go and do those triples. You know, you don't want to train a single jump, but really going into those details helped me learn them because I relearned all the technique. And that's why I was able to get the, get these jumps. And so the season started, it was, I did my first competition in Minsk and it was so weird because I hadn't competed in five years in single skating and it was just like I didn't have a partner on my side anymore. It was just like such an adjustment. Oh, but oh man, how I enjoyed it. I won my first ISU medal from that competition. I got third. It, there were not, I think there were like five competitors. There were not many competitors, but it was still an ISU competition and I still did really well. I was so excited and I was just like, I felt like proud and I was like, like grateful for this possibility that I had in my life. And um, the whole like season was great. I did another very good competition in Sofia in Bulgaria, where I also won silver medal and I managed to get the norms for Europeans and also short program for worlds. 
and uh, I don't remember which place I got it. Nationals. It's not even that important. I don't remember. Probably. But anyway, it was just, it was a great season. Like I, I was really on top of my game and that was only because of my determination and that awesome team I had around me. Like my coach was, she was more like my mentor and my friend because we, our age difference is five years. So she wasn't that much older and she had just quit skating and we used to train together. So I, I couldn't look at her as a, as this evil coach, you know, I looked more as she was my friend and I could really tell her everything and I would tell her like hey like I can't come in today and like either I was really tired or I was like listen my body needs some time to rest and she was always so understanding about it so I think that's also why everything worked out that season but it was like I didn't even realize how how many like emotions I went through that whole season it was such a roller coaster and I was so happy but um uh, and by the end of the season, I was really, I felt drained. And, um, and I think that's where I'm gonna put a stop today because, and I'll, I'll try to make the part two as, as quick as possible. But anyway, at, by the end of that season, that was 2016, I, um, the season ended. Um, I think I, yeah, I got, I was pretty sad that I didn't make it to the worlds because I missed out by like, zero point something points to get to worlds i was kind of sad about it i felt a little disappointed in myself i was like you know like you had such a good flow like you i really could have done it and and then like stuff didn't look as colorful anymore and i think what really happened was that i just didn't realize realize how tired i was from that one season that started basically from june and went all the way to like end of March and yeah the season ended and and now I think it's a good time to stop this video and tell you that part two will have a different color to it and I did not want to put them put them together because it just made the video too long so come back for part two to episode four part two to hear how this story ends and how my skating career as we know it so far ends because it still goes on i'm still skating but i did stop competing um 2017 and right now we're at 2016 so there's one more part so yeah so please come back uh, whenever i notify on my social media that part two is up uh, make sure you subscribe and just stay safe everyone i hope you're all um almost done with the quarantine and you are still inspired and motivated about life and just like really uh do not hesitate to message me or comment or do any of those things because i really like reading your letters and answering them and um, i hope i just bring some inspiration to your day i guess and uh yeah that's it for today bye